Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, let us come and let you make your grace, your grace fall down, that we may hear the resurrected truth, that we may have resurrected life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you open hearts, open souls, open minds, lead God, church, direct, as only you can. Mm -hmm. Father, let your shikana glory come in here, Father, and change the people that have came with an expectancy. Father, that when they go back out, they'll be standing on higher ground than they were when they came in. Touch now, Father, not only the ones that are represented here, the ones that are going to be over on social media, Father. Reach down, Father. Yes. As only you can. Yes. Into the houses of the people that are sitting up yes. in yes. Touch their hearts, God. Yes. To allow them to know that you are speaking from heaven. Yes. That time is winding up. Yes. Time is short now. Yes. It's been speeding up. Natural disasters are all over the earth. <coughs> Man is one of the most because he's leading to his own understanding. Yes. Even in the church, they have no understanding of what it's all about. Father, forgive mankind. Because they have forgotten or they don't even know there is a God that sits high and looks low. Lord, I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because you said in your word, if I lift you, yes. you would draw all me. Yes. Father, put a drawing anointing. Yes, sir. Put a drawing anointing over the airway. Put that drawing anointing there to bring that out. To be saved. Yeah. Lord, put that drawing anointing that by your strike we are healed. That yeah. sick person yeah. that said that they were too sick to come out. Jesus. Touch their body yeah. now, yeah. Because you don't only own the soul, yeah. but you own the body and the spirit. Yeah. So help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. To <laughs> understand just what you are doing, yes. how you are doing, yes. and how you have fashioned. To separate the end from the beginning. That we are on a journey now, a spiritual journey. That we are making that journey in the spiritual realm from being the first Adam to becoming the second Adam. Help us, Lord, to become that second Adam, rooted and grounded with everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. There's about five things. About six things that I want you to understand, and the reason why man needs the reason why man needs a savior. You lost because of your relationship with Satan. Let me explain that. What the Bible calls the world is called society. We 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 operate in society all the time. But the thing about operating in society, you are operating in society, and society is actually made for you to have desire, for you to form desires, for you to have appetite. But your appetite and your desire by society has nothing to do with what God is trying to do. Okay. But in order for you to participate in society, you have to get up. Take God's life, real. Take God's strength. Take God's mercy. Take God's grace, and you have to go out there and participate in society. But God is giving you life, but He's actually not giving you anything. You are not getting anything towards everlasting life by participating in something temporary. Because time won't stop. So if you go out there and work 80 hours a week, your 80 hours a week working for society is going to give you nothing towards eternal life. You understand what I'm saying? So now that your relationship with Satan had to do with how much you love yes. that world like this. Yes. Uh, if you want me to give you a scripture, you can go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Now I can stand right like here, but I ain't got time. I got a lot of information to give to you. So in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he would tell you that the God of society, the God of the world, he's going to blind your mind. That's his whole job is to blind your mind. Uh, to keep you wound up, always doing something. And yeah, you ever noticed down through the years, I'm 67 years old, I thought that when I got that first new car, the way it was a van, custom, I thought I was something. I thought when I got that first new van that I would be satisfied when it got over. Yes, sir. Then I want something. Yes, Any of y'all relate to what I'm 
18 4 is going to help you with that. Because that soul that you got in you, that's what God is trying to receive back. That's the part that gives you, you should, can you see me stretching my right hand? Can you see me stretching my left hand? It's the soul inside of me that gives me that action. The soul inside of me is what gives me the right to speak. Uh, the soul inside of me is what gives me deep. Now, if God tells the soul that's it, come here, come on, then somebody will have to come in here and get what you call Travis up off this club. For God only took back what he gave Travis to operate it. Right. So the illusion is on what I see in the mirror. That's a lie. What you don't see is what who you are. And it's physically dying every day you wake up. Preaching, how did this come about? Glad to ask. Let me prove the point. Let's go to Genesis. I was talking about disobedience to the Word of God. We're going to go to Genesis 2 7. 2 17. Genesis 2 17 says, And the Lord God commanded 2 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the God, thou may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Satan, he is loose, but as you can to say him. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And what did he say? He says, I'm telling you there's a tree. I'm telling you there's a tree in the garden. He says, I'm telling you don't eat of it. He said, because I'm telling you, the day you eat of it, you're going to disobey what I say. Right. And the physical ramification and the spiritual ramification of disobeying me is simply going to be this. You're going to die. Physically, no. Spiritually. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, let's prove that it died. When we go to Genesis 3, it says that that tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But we know if we read Genesis 2 that God had brought the animals to Adam to name the animals. Is that not right? So Satan being subtle said to himself, if I walk up to Eve as a tree, she going to know who he was talking about. I got to disguise myself. Being that I'm subtle, if I disguise myself as an animal, Adam just named the animal, so she ain't going to think it's not bad to conversate with the animal. Because her, her husband just named it. Right. So he, he turned himself into a snake <laughs> out of his Because Adam had just named the animal. And, 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 and don't agree with me, you're going to be Go ahead. The Bible says in Genesis 3, he was more solid than any other animal in the field. Is that what the Bible says? So as an animal, he eats. Right on up to eat. And as he what does God say? He didn't know. He didn't know what God said. And God is his word. And he was supposed to be obeying the word. If she didn't know what the word said, how she going to obey it? If she don't know what the word said, how she going to obey it? So if the word says, if he takes one step, if I take one step, he'll we'll take two. If that ain't the word, it ain't no good. That's right. Uh, it ain't right. So it's the word right. that gives you the relationship. 
she couldn't discern what God is saying, so when the, the scouts, the deception, that's what he's pulling on the church now. The deception, he done transformed himself into being a pastor, a teacher, a bishop, a prophet, and everything else. And he's disguising the church now. So he eased up. Mm-hmm. And when he began to talk to her, she beat it. Huh? Bye. You know what he better? Do y'all know what he better? He said he was another doctor. Other than what God said. Right. Uh, he fed her something else other than what God said. Can I stop? Can I break right here for one minute? Right, right. Man still don't know what I just told you because man still thinks there's an apple in the garden. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Amen. He still thinks there's an apple tree in the garden. Come on. And it ain't about an apple tree, no. He don't understand how it happened and what happened. So if you don't understand where you came from, how do you get it? Where you going? Come on, come on. Come on. How you gonna be guessing the way you go? I'm coming from the book. I'm showing you from the book. That's right. Now the Bible ain't crazy. It don't. It don't tell you something to drop you off a cliff and leave you sitting up there going. No, I don't quite understand that. The Bible explains it, see. And it will give you confirmation. There's never been a scripture in the Old Testament that hangs out there by itself and don't explain itself in the New Testament. Uh-huh. So you can't say where the Bible is confusion. No, you just don't understand how to read it. Come on, Pat. So here we go. So now, the disguise has run up the east because disobedience. What did it cause mankind to do? Be lost in sin. Everything going after that period. Was lost. Right. Right. Mm. So what did the president of the Republican Party do? Come up with a plan for man to be saved? No. What did the president of the Democrats do? Come up with a plan for man to be saved? What group of people come together with a council and came up with a plan for man to be saved? God did. Now that brings me to you. That brings me to you. Y'all ever heard of anything called the Trinity? Mm-hmm. Okay. The Trinity is where God the Father came up with a created plan after he created for him to come to earth to save mankind. So therefore, in order for mankind to be saved, he had to come as God. So he changed his name. Say, so prepare me a body. I'm going to call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. I'm going down there amongst lost mankind. And I'm going to pay for every sin. He left heaven, came down to reveal the purpose plan of God. And then he said, John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, so it must have been God's plan. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Don't miss that. Come on. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. What he sent his son to do. He sent his son to do something nobody in here could do. Nobody. Hey, brother, you can nobody to do. He sent his son to implement a plan to save you and I. Right. Oh, boy, it's going to get good in a minute, so kick your shoes on out. So when Jesus came, he implemented the plan, and they say going up down by the hill, they beat him with a cat of nine tails. Said blood was dashed from his body. Matter of fact, it says they beat him beyond recognition. And when they beat him beyond recognition, while they were putting them whips on him, everything they did to him was for the purpose of us to have the keys of the kingdom that he was going to take possession of when he come up from Satan. He was going to give up to us. So before he ever, before he ever passed him to the cross, he paid while we're here. By his strength. Yes, yes. We are here. That's right. That is a bunch of cars sitting out there. But for 
why do you can't drive my car because you ain't got the key. That's right. <laughs> you got to have the right key to go into the right. Amen. And in Matthew 16, he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the key. Amen. He said, upon this rock, the revelation, that you know who I sent to the earth to redeem mankind. Upon this rock, I feel my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. He said, now I'll give you the key to the key. I got the key to wait. I got the key to heaven. I got the key to salvation. I got the key to the God they know of God. I got the key. But do I know? <laughs> I got the keys. So now wait a minute. He paid for your healing before they ever nailed him and passed him to the cross. Do you hear what he said? Do you hear what he said? See, everything we're doing through Jesus was important. Right. Oh, well, I, I, I see you in Isaiah 22, but I ain't going there right now. But everything they did for Jesus, when they fastened him to the cross, he wanted the covenant to be fastened in your heart. Yes. So they didn't put him there and say, we just tie him up. No, uh -uh. they took some nails and they fastened him on the cross because what he was doing on the cross was important. Because in order for Abraham's covenant to be guarded, Abraham's covenant must come to pass or it will fall to the ground. Amen. The only way you can be in Abraham's covenant is Jesus nailed to that cross. And when Jesus got nailed to that cross, what was nailed to that cross with that covenant God told Abraham way back in the old covenant. Huh? Huh? Way back in the old covenant, he told Abraham, Abraham, you go ahead and go to and he said, come here. Look up here. See all them stars? I'm going to make you some fruit. Woman. Your children are going to be like the stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. You're going to be planted. So he got Abraham covered. And when he got Abraham covered to the appointed time of the cross, to secure it, to make sure it took the path, he nailed the covenant and fashioned the covenant to the cross. Jesus. He was deceived that it was going to come. Amen. He prophesied about him in Genesis 3. Right. Huh? He was deceived. So now, Romans 11 would tell you that what God did was he told him about the original plan and brought you into the plan and fastened you on. Yeah. Somebody, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. He fastened you on to the tree like he fastened Jesus onto that cross. Amen. Amen. Jesus couldn't have got off the cross until it was finished. That's yes, right. Or you still yes. have some sins yep. that you wouldn't have the key to unlock. That's right. That's right. You still have some sins. You still have some sins That's that right. you wouldn't have the key to unlock. That's right. So, okay. so now, when they nailed them to the cross, we need to understand something. It was about being a saint. See now. They got it fastened to the cross. So that means the old life, the old you, has been taken care of. So he says, it's finished. So the old you has been taken care of. But see, without him getting up, without him being resurrected, without him getting out of the tomb, right. you couldn't be born again. That's right. You couldn't have a new life. That's right. You couldn't move in to what he does. That's right. Let me go. Come on. Come on! Come on. Mm -hmm. See, because look at here. The Bible says you were 
Jesus. Can't nobody put no blame on you. That's right. Come on. Amen. 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 I want you to understand that the gifts of God are without repentance. That's right. Here's the deal. But when you are in Jesus, that green being out there seems to have lost its place. And so the Holy Spirit, oh, that's the third part of the trend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes down to implement. The Jesus came down to reveal the place. The Holy Spirit moves in to grab you by the hand and lead you and tell you what you should do and what. And you might not have the power to do that that you want to do. But when you don't have the power to do that you want to do, you have mercy. Yes, sir. Yes. You have grace Lord. to say, Lord, forgive me. Right. That's right. Seven times seven. Forgive. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus, who implemented the plan, who revealed the plan, said, The blood of the cross is on that one. Father, I stand as high priest. Let them go. Amen. Hallelujah.
Now, I want you to understand, I want you to follow me real carefully. Because he's going to say something real simple to you. Ephesians 1 3. Okay, now, we just left John 1 14. Said Jesus wouldn't work. Huh? Huh? Now, God, your creator, through power, is speaking. He's giving you a revelation. Now, what is John? What did Ephesians 1 3 say? He placed. He pays you what? In Christ. He puts you in Christ. Yep. Which is the word. Right. Made flesh. Yep. So he, God, your creator, implemented the plan to put you in Christ. What was it that Christ did not defeat? Undefeated. <laughs> Undefeated. Undefeated. Now, wait a minute. I want this water out of this bottle, but I can't get to it because it's inside. Hmm? Open it. So, whatever's on the outside is protected. Yeah. Because the right. water's on the inside. Come on. Come on. The water's on the inside. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the cap on the outside is, is protected. Right. So now, yeah. can your mind believe that you were in Christ yeah. on some things? Yeah. Oh, I'm not even going to talk to you. Let me, let me get on God. Let me get on God. Oh. You, on some things, let me tell you what, what you can't believe. You can believe when it's good for you. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. But when it looks impossible for you, you ain't believing. Yeah, that don't change who Jesus is. Yeah, that and that don't change what God puts you at. And you disagree with God, it's called unbelief. And when you stand before him, you're going to have to pay for everything you unbelieve. Because it takes faith to believe. Yes, yes. Now, if I will to get it out, I can get it out. That's right. Because I got wisdom. Huh? Now, 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 when Jesus gets ready, and you in him and he in you, for it to come out, you can run up to the stoplight at that point in time, and you can be sitting up there looking over there like that, and you just, and, 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 and the outside, the flesh that works against the spirit, say, cut him out. Uh-huh. And something will come on the inside that's pure, and tell you don't do that. Amen. That's right. That ain't work on it. Uh, that's you becoming the new you. Yes. The old you should cuss them out. Now, I got to deal with that old you. Because we don't want to deal with the old you. We want to be comfortable in the church, hanging on to what makes us comfortable. But the Bible says that God is constantly pulling us home, pulling our mind to be on deal. Yes. God is constantly asking us for increase. Some of us are sitting in the same spiritual spot. Amen. Where we was 10 years ago. Come on. Mm -hmm. And we're not being renewed by the transforming of our mind. We are comfortable. I go to church. Right. It's like these churches of God. And because you come here, I did so. Yeah. Huh? Come on. Huh? I would be rightly and messed up. I'd rather for you everything in here to talk about me. I could be out there doing what I want to do and go home and get in my prayer car and tell God why I just don't have the power because you give me grace and mercy. Yeah, yeah. God, I don't have the power to go down there with them. They look at me like I'm crazy anyway. But God, you can save me because you yeah. made me. Yeah. I don't have to say not with the church, not with the congregation, not with the, 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 the denomination. I'm not conversating with the pastor. I'm conversating with the one that created me. Yeah, and yeah. when I go and be clean to the one that created me, then he looks at me and says, forgive him, but he know not what he do. That's when grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient when I tell God all about my next Amen. 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 Am
When everybody else was running from COVID, I was stepping straight to it. Didn't make no difference to me. See, I don't fear death. See, you fear death, you better not try that. That's right. Uh, 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 you better not, if you fear death, you better not try that. See, you come. But I knew it was a long time ago. God took me and Jesus. Hey. Come on, come on. God took me and Jesus for a long time ago. Okay. So now, if I'm supposed to be ordained to do the work, John, I'm supposed to do the work, Jesus. And I got his money. Mm-hmm. Then I got it. That's right. Huh? Yeah. If that be true, mm-hmm. as the young lady said, let me try. Oh. <laughs> so a long time ago when I got saved, I didn't have with people and I was kind of afraid that people were going to look at me like I was crazy. Mm-hmm. But I had a bunch of dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bible to put this down. I thought about it. I said, you know that you said in that word that your word don't come by the Lord. Let me try this thing. Amen. Go for later. Just there, me and my wife had them in the box. On the counter. I ain't the one. I took the puppet like this right here. We wiggle it like that right there. I throw them back in the box. They said, hey. I said, yeah. That puppet will lie. They had them down still. I said they were dead. Mm-hmm. So we took three more. We put them back in the box. They live. Hallelujah. But if you don't try something, how are you ever going to know what works? Right. If you don't exercise something, how are you going to know? If you don't speak to the rock, come on. how are you going to know? You sitting up there with a key, a master key, the key of David. To every treasure God got in your safety deposit box. And you ain't never opened it up and look in there and say, let me try this key right That's here. Right. Oh, see, everything is there's a master key. Right. You got the key to sit. Yeah. You got the key to prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. You got the key to the covenant. Yeah. You got the key to the promises. Yeah. You got the key of Jesus. You got the power of his name. So therefore, you can buy what you buy in earth. Heaven won't bind it on earth in heaven. Right. So now, you got all these keys come, that comes with salvation, and the best you can do is come to church and pray. Mm-hmm. Come on, Pastor. That's the best you got. That's the best you got. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you about this key back there. <laughs> what about this key back here? What about this key back right here with a power? Uh, 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 yes. huh. yeah. I don't like to let my flesh speak louder than my mouth. Yeah. I don't like to let my flesh speak louder than my mouth. Mm. If I got the power of life in my mouth, mm. if the Bible be right, he said, those the earth stand and be seen top and bottom. The word of God is life. Yeah. So if, 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 you, if you got the power of life to in your mouth, what are you showing on your body? Want me to tell you what to do? Want me to tell you what to do? Want me to tell you what to do? When the, when the, when the doctor tell them, well, I'm sorry to tell you this, this is what you got. Instead of them proclaiming what God said, the first thing they do is agree with the doctor. Call somebody and tell somebody exactly what the doctor said. They don't tell nobody nothing about what God said. God said, God said, God Hallelujah. I heard you, doctor, but I ain't gonna believe you. The only part in this matter, I'll be the best for life. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you, God. I'm gonna take your report. Yes, sir. I'm gonna plant some life on me. Then I'll come here with you, God. Right, right. But I'm gonna plant life on me first. Yes, sir. Amen. So here's what he said. It's long as we're in Satan, it's gonna be seed time and hot. You got to plant a seed to get a harvest. Yes, right. And you can't plant a chair and expect to get a wheat. Nope. Can't do it. I ain't never seen nobody go in the field and plant a tomato talking about I'm going to give me a pineapple. Nope. Right. But it don't work that way. Huh? So why are you going to let the doctor give you a pineapple and you standing there and we're in your mouth with what you need yourself so you can get a harvest? Right, right. Just as soon as he get that out of his mouth, well, as Pastor Samson, your heart is bad. The devil in the law, Jesus oh, Christ is running around in there. You better look at it again. You will see him sitting high on the throne. Come on, now. 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 That's right. But I have the power. That's right. I have the power. You got it, too. Yeah. And I'm 
that's the problem. What I'm trying to say, we were going twice. We were going old Adam. If you were saved, you were going new Adam. There's a journey from the old Adam to the new Adam. And as you make that journey, the closer you get to Christ, the more Christ-like you become. Right. And the more Christ-like you become, the more you ought to be saying to yourself, everything man telling me don't belong to me. I'm a redeemed man. I'm not a cursed man. You ought not to be accepting cursed things right. if you say you've been redeemed. That's right. What you are in looking at right now, what you are looking at right now is a phase of life that's going to die. That's right. The body was made to physically die. Right. But it was only supposed to hold 120 years, right. so God made it temporary. Right. When you're going to wrap your mind around, you were not made to stay on this earth right. Amen. for eternity. Right. This thing is going to leave. This part is going to leave and go back to where it came from. Yeah. But that don't stop you. Yeah. You're going to step out. Right. When you step out, then you're going to step up. Mm-hmm. You're going to step up, then step down, and you're going to step up, and then step up. Right. You're either going to go into Abraham bosom, or you're going to go in Haiti, where the rich man said, Lord! Step up. And ha! Yeah. Lord! Yeah. Lord yeah. Hey. The poor man left. Yeah. Come give me some water. He said, no, he didn't go over there when you was rich or work. You didn't go down there to get him that crumb that fell from your table. You let him fight with the dog. That wasn't him. So he said, well, he wouldn't help the poor man when he was on earth. Now, all of a sudden, I want to be an evangelist. God, let me go tell my brother, don't come down here. This place is hot. Let me go tell my brother, you know what? Don't come here. He said, no. They ain't going to listen to somebody that died. They're not going to listen to Moses and the prophets. But they still don't die. They ain't going to listen to them. I can't let you go back because you did. The moral of the story. We need a savior. Amen. We ain't got the one wine this building seven times. I know. We ain't got to jump up and down several times. Just like we are, he will accept us and come down the way we are and bring us along every day. His grace and his mercy is just that big and just that good. To the point that I ain't got to worry about what you're doing, brother, and you ain't got to worry about what I'm doing. Or the same grace covering him is covering me. Amen. Same grace is covering me, covering you. Same grace is covering me, covering him. Same grace is covering North Carolina, is covering New Jersey. The same grace, the same God, the same Amen. Jesus, and the same Holy Spirit, Amen. and the same Word. That's where it's devastating. There are 55,000 denominations out of this one body. So the pastor called Phil, and he asked me, if you please go to the church? So you can't. Why? I said, because your doctrine is different than my doctrine. You who? I haven't found that in the Bible. And then you don't want to read the word. You want to base what you know of what God is saying to you from him. Right. You cannot base what you know about God off of what that voice in your head says. Right. You've got to have confirmation from the word. Amen. Because the Bible said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of what? Where do you find what proceeded out of the mouth of God? So I was talking to you. So I ain't trying to play no church. I ain't trying to get nobody messed up with a woman coming in my face on me. woman coming in my face on me, sir. Huh? And he come out with me. Huh? And I know that as soon as I got home, she was going to have to bow to the authority of God in me. Amen. And that's exactly what happened. But see, she had done 
been flamboyant in the church. Took it by storm, did you? You never know. You never know. So here's the thing. I fellowship with who God tells me to fellowship with. And I ain't trying to run to your revival. And I, I ain't trying to have no revival. Because I realize time is changing. Yes, yeah, yes. God is speaking. Yes. So I'm going to leave on this one right here because I don't want my brother to accept what the church got to offer. But, but I want to explain something to you. The word of God is moving like down through this house. It don't make no difference whether y'all get on board. That's right. It's going to do exactly it's what God said it's going to do. It's going to bring it exactly what God said it's going to bring. And if God did it, go down there and drop some great fruit sized hail on that town over there. <laughs> they told the car to slam up and hurt some people. That's right. Great fruit sized hail to get me. Huh? You ever hear something? Wonder what God mad with everybody. If I was standing in that town where that hell hit at, I wouldn't even got out of my shoes and look. You'd have been seeing me. Where you going, Pastor? Who are this time? God must be mad this time. He's dropping hell like that. He's got to be saying something. Yes, yes. So now, we need to say it. And that's an everyday thing. That ain't a woman. That's an everyday thing. We need to say it. So now, how about some lines clear? Brother, again, I say, anytime you want to come, you grow. Hallelujah. Yes, anytime you want to come. Amen. And you this tree. Hallelujah. But I ain't going to leave nobody to 